What's up everybody? Today we're going to check out some phones, one that changed the world and one that made us realize we are spoiled. Let's check it out. Welcome back to my channel everybody. So I want to say right away, this is not going to be some kind of shootout as to like which phone's faster or which one has better specs or anything along those lines. It's obvious this phone is ridiculously cutting edge. This phone came out, you know, in 2007. So just wanted to put that out there from the jump that we will not be doing some kind of crazy benchmarking between the two to show you where we were and where we are. But we are going to be talking about the specs and what we considered revolutionary and what we kind of even complained about when it first came out. So this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This is an 8 gig iPhone 2G. So jumping right into the specs. So the iPhone 1 has an ARM 11 processor that was originally clocked at 400 megahertz and later on with the software update was clocked to 412 megahertz a single core processor the iPhone 13 has a six core processor uh, two running at 3.22 gigahertz and four running at 1.82 gigahertz gigahertz megahertz huge difference um, the iPhone 1 had 128 megs of RAM the iPhone 13 Pro Max has six gigs of RAM. Now, when it was originally released, the iPhone 2G came in a four gigab gigabyte model, but that was discontinued later at some point. So the versions that were released were a four, eight, and 16 gigab gigabyte model. The 13 came with, as its base, 128 gigs. Uh, you can get a 256, a 512, and even a one terabyte model. So massive difference in the amount of storage it's not even really comparable um the screen size now i do remember when this came out i remember thinking man that is a perfect size it fits in your hand it's not too big etc etc and now using a phone this size is like comical you would never even think of buying a phone this size or at least i wouldn't i know there's some people out there that are fans of the uh, mini phones and whatnot but that's not me um this has a 3.5 inch tft uh display with a resolution of 320 by 480 and the pixels per inch is 165. Compare and contrast to the OLED screen on the 13 Pro Max, that's 6.7 inches, does HDR, Dolby Vision, etc., etc., um, and has a PPI of 458. It's insane, comparably. Um, the radios in the phone, so a lot of people forget about that. You know, I know we talk about 5G, but the, what was available in, when this phone came out versus what's available now is not even in the same ballpark. So this phone was originally released GSM only. Um, it only worked on AT&T and was a 2G phone that ran at peak at like 0.1 megabits per second. Not megabytes, megabits. Super slow by today's standards. The 13 Pro Max has a 5G ultra wideband phone, um, a radio in it that can theoretically talk at up to four gigabits. I know that's not realistic in the real world, but still several thousand times faster than what this could do. Uh, they both have Wi-Fi. This has B and G only, which at the time was fast. 50 megabits was nothing to laugh at. It was totally doable, but now it's, you know, yeah, you can stream Netflix and stuff, but it's nothing big by any stretch of the imagination versus the Wi-Fi 6 in the iPhone 13. I believe the 12 had it as well with a theoretical max of like 10 gigabits, I believe it is. You know, some of the other things that are easily overlooked when you pick up a phone are the sensors. This has an accelerometer and a proximity um, sensor in the top so it could tell when you put it to your ear versus the face, the, you know, the 13 Pro has an accelerometer and a proximity sensor as well. But it also has the face ID to unlock versus just a slide to lock in a passcode. Um, it also has a gyro so I can tell, you know, its its orientation in the world. It has a compass and a barometer as well for, you know, the environment, sensing the environment. The cameras, I do remember when this came out thinking, why would anybody want a camera on their phone? And now you would never even think about getting a phone without a camera. No front facing camera. And the rear shooter is two megapixel and only does pictures. It did no video, doesn't have a flash, anything like that, and is akin to what you'd see in a watch that had a phone, uh, a, a camera in it. 
the 13 Pro has an array of 12 megapixel cameras that do all sorts of different video modes, slow motion, wide angle, etc., etc. Not even in the same ballpark. I bet I'm willing to bet that this camera array is leaps and bounds better than any camera that was around that a normal person could buy when this phone came out. Um, pretty significant, you know, what time will do. This came in black. This came in, comes in graphite, gold, silver, and Sierra blue. And then, you know, one of the other big features is obviously the software. So we zip around in our phones today. We go between messages, Facebook, WhatsApp, all those things without even thinking about, you know, the that that functionality did not exist when this phone came out. If you were in a music app listening to music and you wanted to go check your mail, when you hit the home button and you went to home, the home screen, your music stopped playing. You couldn't have Pandora running in the background or anything like that. Uh, I don't even know if Pandora was out when this phone came out, but you had to quit the app, go do the thing you wanted to do, and then come back to your music to listen to it. Insane. You know, no one would even put up with that or think of putting it up with that. Um, there's no swipe down menus for like your settings and all those things. Um, no FaceTime. FaceTime didn't come out until 2010, so that wasn't around when this phone even came out. Um, and again, only worked on AT&T. You could not go and get this for Verizon or your other carriers. Um, yeah, so pretty significantly right there. Um, no GPS. Again, I know I said that already, but no front-facing camera, no compass. The iPhone 13 Pro, when it came out September 24th, or when it was announced, I should say, People right away complained. They were like, you know, oh, it's in, you know, should be the 12S and, you know, other comments along those lines. Not a crazy amount of fanfare. You know, I was excited about the 120 hertz refresh rate on the screen, but it's kind of an S model, you know, or I can understand why people would think that. You know, I appreciate some of the other functions that some people might not, but um, I can understand why people might think that. When this phone came out, there was nothing like it. Um, they were treating this like a computer. They called it Mac OS originally when it first came out, or they said something along the lines of that it ran Mac OS. It wasn't until later versions of the software that they actually coined the term, the phrase iOS. So they really were treating this like an extension of your computer. Say what you want about the iPhone. You know, if you're an Android person, I totally get it. And it's cool. I love Android too. But if this phone didn't come out when it did, who knows what we'd be carrying around in our pockets today. Um, I'm sure we would have eventually gotten there, but I think it would have been much later. This really was an innovative phone that changed the way we communicate, the way we uh, send data across the internet, and the way we organize our lives. It's cool. I purposely bought this phone just so I can hold on to it to show my kids when they get super, you know, later on in life and I can show them where it all started. Thanks for stopping by today to check out this video. I appreciate it. Um, let me know in the comments below. Did you buy this phone when it first came out? Um, did you have other smartphones before it? If so, what did you have? I'm curious to know. Um, feel free to hit the thumbs up and let me know if you liked the video. Uh, that thumbs down button works as well. And as always, I'd appreciate the subscription. Peace.